and go. Hello everyone. I'm Urmila Bulla, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Slavery, Its Causes and Consequences. I'm sorry that I'm not able to be present in person today to address this learning lab, but I want to offer my heartiest congratulations to the organizers, ICAR, the Danish Institute for Human Rights, the Harrison Institute and the University of Nottingham on the event of this first learning lab workshop on public procurement and human rights. I have no doubt that this learning lab and the process it will generate will add significant strategic value to discussing how government procurement can leverage business respect for human rights. After all, governments are the main duty bearers given their international human rights law obligations. As I noted in my latest report to the UN Human Rights Council, states have an obligation under international human rights law to respect, protect and fulfill human rights of all persons in their territory and or under their jurisdiction. This includes the duty to protect individuals and groups against human rights abuses committed by private actors such as business enterprises. The United Nations Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights highlight the importance of using government purchasing power to enhance business respect for human rights. Guiding Principle 6 states that, I quote, states should promote respect for human rights by business enterprises with which they conduct commercial transactions, end quote. The commentary to this guiding principle highlights that government procurement, quote, including the terms of contracts, end quote, is one of the most powerful opportunities states have to support the implementation of the UNGPs. In the context of contemporary forms of slavery, this could translate into a smart mix of measures to ensure that businesses engage in their responsibility to respect human rights, including through undertaking human rights due diligence throughout their supply chains and remediating the adverse impact of their operations on human rights. At the very minimum, states should ensure that businesses realize the implications of purchasing products or services that have in any way been linked to forced labor or other contemporary forms of slavery. To date, states have adopted diverse approaches to addressing this issue, which include ensuring criminal, civil and tort liability for business-related human rights violations, setting up mechanisms to regulate such compliance in trade and consumer protection, and of course addressing it in government procurement. This last approach, using government procurement, is a powerful tool to push companies to respect human rights, not only in the context of forced labor or other contemporary forms of slavery, but in relation to all aspects of human rights. Governments, like other mega consumers, procure goods and services through global supply chains. As we know, these global supply chains are often implicated in adverse human rights impacts, including low wages and excessive working hours, child labor and the worst forms of child labor, human trafficking and loss of life, to name but a few. States are taking steps towards using procurement to increase business respect for human rights. For example, President Obama issued Executive Order 13627 in 2012. Under this executive order, United States federal contractors, subcontractors and their employees are prohibited from engaging in misleading or fraudulent recruitment practices, charging employees recruitment fees, and destroying, concealing, confiscating or otherwise denying an employee access to their identity documents such as passports and driver's licenses. Under the order, contractors and subcontractors are further required to agree to fully cooperate by contractual agreement in providing reasonable access to enforcement agencies to conduct audits, investigations and other actions to assess compliance with the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000. Norway is another positive example. Norway identifies so-called high-risk sectors for human rights violations. When procuring from one of those sectors, Norway notifies bidders that their competitive ability to adhere to the ILO core conventions and laws of the country of production will be part of the evaluation of bidders for government contracts. Norway also includes a clause that makes compliance with core labor standards a part of contract performance. Despite these positive procurement reforms, however, there is an urgent and increasing need to do more. 
and the identification of effective measures in this international learning lab on public procurement and human rights is a step in the right direction. It provides a valuable forum for procurement professionals and policy makers to learn from one another and from civil society and academics about successful initiatives that can drive the use of public procurement to leverage business respect for human rights. I applaud once again the efforts of ICAR, the Harrison Institute of Georgetown Law, the Public Procurement Research Group of Nottingham University and the Danish Institute for Human Rights in creating this learning lab and organizing this first international workshop. I also applaud all of you present today for engaging in this valuable dialogue. I encourage you to stay involved in the Learning Lab moving forward, as I hope to do, and wish you constructive deliberations and good outcomes. Thank you.